Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin, and I'm here to talk about toys. Today, we're taking a look at two Making of a Ninja packs from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem toy line. These are brand new. Uh, I actually went out looking for the basic figures and found two of these three packs. I unfortunately couldn't find all four Turtle Brothers, uh, but I have Raph and Leo here. Uh, these are some fun sets, and we're going to check them out today. So what is a Making of a Ninja set? Well, this set contains a base Ninja Turtle figure made in glow-in-the-dark plastic, a toddler turtle, and a baby or pre-mutated turtle figurine, all made out of glow-in-the-dark plastic. Ninja Turtles and glow-in-the-dark go hand-in-hand -hand really well because of ooze, you know, the weird sci-fi-ness of all of that. But Turtle fans have grown to love getting the little pack-in baby turtles or toddler turtles over the years. The original... Ninja Turtles toy line from the 80s had pack-in baby turtles in the slime tubs. You know, get a little barrel of slime, and there was a little pack-in turtle in those. Um, I loved having that glow-in-the-dark turtle as a kid. And then in the 2012 line, the Nicktoons line, we got sets of two packs of toddler turtles. So they were like turtles in training. Super cute. I mean, I, even as a kid, I remember seeing the 1990 movie and being blown away by the Jim Henson puppet of the baby turtle. Radical, radical, radical. You know, the, uh, there's just something about that. It's so adorable, and we don't focus on that stage, obviously. We focus on the t turtles as teens, uh, but it's neat to see that in a flashback, and it's great for merchandising, so of course here they're capitalizing on it. So you get a pack where you're getting a repaint, basically, or a reissue of the basic figure, and then instead of packing in all the extra accessories, they're giving you a, the, the toddler, because the regular turtles come with a baby turtle, and a sprue of additional accessories that you can punch out. Here you don't get the sprue. You're still getting the baby turtle, uh, but you get that toddler turtle. They're, they're charging you extra for just that toddler and saving a little bit of money on... They didn't really tool up a whole lot for this set, and they, they cut out those extra accessories. So uh, it's it's decent value, but it's definitely a, a great move on Playmates part here to uh, you know get some more skews on the shelf. The turtles come in purple brick packaging. Uh, it's kind of retro-inspired. The old original Turtles had the brick motif, not necessarily in this purple style. And the packages have some great artwork of the new Mutant Mayhem style Turtles. The side of the package shows off some of the other Turtles. Basically, Leo shows off Raph. And Raph shows off Leo. Okay. Uh, they don't really show a cross-sell too many of them then. I guess, since the two I have cross-sell each other. YouTube.com slash at TMNT, new webisodes and more. That's interesting. I wonder what's uh, going on on their website there on YouTube. Train day and night with Raph's glowing mutation. After the baby turtles fall into the sewer and are doused with toxic ooze, they grow into glowing turtle tots who train in their lair, and become Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I do have to say that I think that it's great that the toddlers are unique. The babies seem to be very similar, um, but the the toddlers, Raph is, is kind of like a pudgy one, and Leo's eyes are kind of wide set and goofy looking. I would love to see uh, the Mikey and Donnie ones and see how those guys look. I wonder if Donnie's has glasses also. All right, let's bust these guys out of the package so we can take a closer look. All right, so we've got these guys out of the package. I did do a little bit of research, and I couldn't find any signs of the other two turtles actually being packed like these. So maybe they've only done these two. It kind of stinks if they only do uh, two out of the four turtles. I know Donnie tends to be the one that sells the least. He does get left out of some variations. I don't know. I kind of hope they do all four, because I. it's weird to me, a lot of times, to get turtles not in complete sets of four. I know that doesn't isn't really how it works out for kids. Um, as a kid, I very rarely had all four characters from a show in the same style. You know, I've mentioned it with Ghostbusters before. I never had all four of them in the original Kenner version. I had some of those and some of the Sprite features. Same thing with Ninja Turtles. When they would do, like, a subline, it was rare for me to get all four wacky action turtles or all four, you know, whatever the variant was. Um... But I, I do like displaying my turtles that way now. So as a collector, it gives me a little bit of a an uneasy feeling if they don't do them. And I was kind of wondering how they would do Donnie because Donnie does come with a few extra accessories beyond what the normal ones do that kind of complete his look. The glasses, the headphones, his little fanny pack. Um, so I'm wondering what they would have left out for him. Maybe his 
toddler turtle will be the skinniest and use the least amount of plastic. I don't know, and, and, and maybe they'll do it, and maybe they won't. I, I really don't know. But back to focusing on what we have in hand here. So I've got the two baby turtles molded in glow-in-the-dark plastic with just a hit of paint on the back of their shell. Uh, I don't know whether they will have paint on their shells as babies in the movie. They did that in Out of the Shadows, or right? In Teenage Mutant Turtles Out of the Shadows, the, the Michael Bay, or the first version of that, right? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They had, in the lab, swipes of paint on their back. Um, I guess that's okay. These turtles don't have different skin tones. In the basic figure assortment, they do have different skin tones, so each turtle is molded in a different color. With the glow-in-the-dark range, you don't have that, so maybe that's why they did the, the paint deco hit there. They are very similar, but they might be different. It's really tricky to tell, because there's not that much detail to them. It's just kind of maybe the tilt of their head or something like that. Baby turtles. Love them. The toddler turtles. Now, I didn't pull out the toddler turtles from the 2012 line to look at them, but the accessories in Raph's hand really remind me of those. It wouldn't surprise me if this is a reuse of that mold or at least just a retool of the sculpt that was already done. These could be unique, uh, but especially like if this doesn't show up in the movie or they don't have their weapons in the movie, uh, that they would have reused the the accessories. I can't remember what Leo's swords look like, but for some reason the, the size stick out to me. But I love the different proportions of these guys. There is an articulation point halfway through the chest and the turtle shell. It's a little awkward because it breaks the shell when you turn that, but okay, I'm not going to complain about articulation. The arms can move around. They do have hinges on those. Raph doesn't get a lot of posability because he's kind of a... I just threw his side. He's kind of a chunky figure there, um, so his range of motion is not great. And his head does turn. It's on a, sort of like a pivot. Um, I love I love Chunky Raph. I think he looks great. His sides are molded out of like a light tan, so they look like they're wood, like a, you know, a training prop kind of thing. And he's got paint for the back shell, his front shell, and, of course, his eyes. Leo over here has got the light brown swords, the same type of articulation. His head's going to turn. head's a little stiff. He's got a little bit of an E.T. look to him, I think. Uh, the, his eye spacing is a, a little bit goofier. Uh, but, yeah, he's posable. Again, fairly limited range of motion between just having that single ball joint as the only articulation point in the arms, and then having the shells there. Um, so they're always sort of going to be standing like this, but you can get a little bit of posing there. And then the, what we often refer to as the full-grown, but the teenage version of the turtles. These are repaints of the basic figures. I don't know if you guys have seen any reviews of them. Uh, they're, they're pretty nice figures for the price range. Playmates does a pretty good job of keeping their toys affordable. And these guys look really good. I think even if you're not a huge fan of this movie or of um, Seth Rogen, I think you could really enjoy these figures. I'm looking forward to the movie. I think it's going to be fun, no matter uh, whether it's like my version of TMNT or not. I think it's going to be great. In fact, if you, um, you want to talk about the versions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I did a video not too long ago my guest John, and we talked all about the, how Ninja Turtles reinvents itself over and over again. You should consider checking out that video. So Raph does have the skull cap style bandana. This came out of the Bay movies and it's kind of stuck around for some reason for him. Uh, so his full head is covered. He's got the bandana tied there. He's got a little pouch on his belt. He's got a belt buckle, his R. He's got spots to clip his size into his belt, which is, again, a very traditional design. So really, I think that skull cap is the main thing that makes this raft not look like your classic cartoon raft. Otherwise, it's pretty faithful in its design to the vintage turtles. And that's one of the things that I think is great when they don't stray too far. You know, Next Mutation strayed pretty far from the original designs. Um, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the goofy cartoon from not too long ago, that strayed pretty far. When they stick kind of close, 2003, um, the 2012 Ninja Turtles, the 1990 movies, when they stick kind of close to the original cartoon comic book looks, I think they always do really well. He does have a little scratch on his chest. Shell detail looks pretty nice. 
Uh, mainly, Paint Deco is his face, and then he's got the his little bands painted on there. Uh, but overall, he looks great, and I, I can't wait to check these guys out glowing. You know, I hope they glow really well. It's sometimes hard to catch that on camera, though. I just got a new cell phone, so I might be playing around with that camera and seeing if I can capture the glow feature a little bit better than uh, the main camera I use sometimes seems to catch them. All right, we got Raph there. So now Leo, again, a pretty traditional Ninja Turtle action figure. Very slender. Um, ooh, he's got a little bit of like a bring it on kind of look. His eyes are a little squinty. Uh, he does have the gritting teeth also. He's got two katanas. I love that the blades are silver and the handles are brown. That's a really nice feature. I didn't mention it with Raph's size over there, but it always makes him look good. And of course, he has the ability to store those swords on his back, which is always a good thing. Uh, classic Ninja Turtles, that crisscross sword on the back. I love the way that looks. He Both of his straps go over one shoulder. This is one of those things that has changed over the years from like the crisscross to no uh, support straps. What do you guys think about that? Do you like it better, like in the original cartoon where they all just had single belts? Do you like it how the original toys had those two straps? Do you do them diagonally over the same shoulder? Do you crisscross them? I think the 1990 movie, maybe, was where they went in the same direction, whereas the vintage toys, I felt like, came packaged in the crisscross position. But it became kind of like a fun thing, a little, little variation that you can do with the turtle designs and still have them work out. Articulation at the head, shoulders, single-jointed elbows, swivels at the wrists, articulation at the hip. Um, doesn't give me a... Oh, kicks out to the side a little bit. Doesn't give me a huge ro amount of articulation at that hip, but enough. Uh, bends at the knees and rockers at the ankle there. Or no, swivels at the ankles. Overall, though, a nice amount of articulation for a fairly budget action figure. I actually really like these guys. I do still want to get the basic releases, especially if they don't do all four of them in the Glow Turtles. Because I try to get the four turtles, the core turtles, in action figure form from every major rendition we get. Um, I don't always have every, you know, every single release of Ninja Turtles, like if it's a statue or a high-end collector toy. But, whoa! These guys just don't want to stand up without me playing around with them a little bit more. That's the great thing about the toddlers. They just stand really well. They got the big old footprint there. Um... But like I was saying, I try to collect the turtles in their like core form from all the main lines. I don't have all of them. I think next mutation, I might only have Venus, uh, but maybe she's the only one I need from that line. Oh! <laughs> um, but overall, I am excited for this movie. I think it'll be a, a fun way to introduce it to a new generation of fans. I'm hoping that it has what the older fans want, and I think it will, because I think... When you go with somebody like Seth Rogen, you get a little bit of that uh, Kevin Smith vibe of like someone who grew up loving this stuff, and they're gonna treat it with some level of respect. They're gonna make it their own, but they're gonna they're gonna treat it with some respect, unless obviously producers don't allow them to. Like Kevin Smith with the uh, Superman movie that he had to write years ago, that luckily we didn't actually get. Um, but I think Seth Rogen's gonna you know put en knows enough Ninja Turtle history. To make this be respectful but different, and I think that's kind of a, a winning, a winning formula for us. All right, guys, in the comments down below, let me know if you're looking forward to this. Are you collecting any of these figures? There's there's a lot of different product out now, but like my target was blown out. Uh, there was very little stuff to pick up. I know this is a pretty short episode because it's basically just a review of two figures, but I hope you enjoy this kind of content. Um, I like to be able to talk about new things as they come out once in a while. And like I said, I'm really excited for this movie. Make sure you like and subscribe. Do me a favor, share this video with a toy collecting friend. If you want to support the channel further, consider joining our Patreon. Thanks for hanging on the peg with me.